My name is Matthew. I live just outside of Anchorage here in Alaska. My uncle Isaac came to stay with us for a while. He's a hunter now who's lived up north in a little village where he and my mother were born. For a few years, the caribou hunting was very bad, so my uncle Isaac came to live with us. When you see a seal on the ice, you got to make the seal think you are another seal. You can't let your elbows and knees stick out, or the seal knows it's you, not another seal. The seal is a pretty smart fella. When you crawl up to him wrong, he's going to jump into the water, and you'll never see that seal again. And when that happens, for Eskimo, it's not so funny, because he's going to be hungry. That caribou fella, he's pretty smart too. But in summertime, he don't see so good. So when you're hunting and you looks over, you just go like this. And he thinks you got antlers and you're just another caribou. Like this? You look just like a caribou. <laughs> <laughs> Your Uncle Isaac really like maple syrup. Don't get too much up north. Matthew, this letter came for you yesterday. We are pleased to inform you that your dog team has been accepted in the annual dog sled races in Anchorage to be held this February. My father gave me his team of dogs because he has a good job and doesn't need them anymore. Where is this race going to be? In Anchorage, February. We're going to have to make some new harnesses. I think we make a new sled for racing. Don't worry, Uncle Esau knows plenty about dogs and sleds. He's going to help you win this race. Isa, come on. The boss will be angry. We better go now. We're going to be the best team in Alaska. <laughs> Sir, I don't. How about giving me a lift to town to the gas station? Yes, sir. Boy, I'm glad you came along. Thought I'd freeze out here. 
One thing good about these dogs is they don't break down. Well, you know, that's a pretty good looking team you got there. Gonna enter them in the dog sled races? They've already been accepted to run. Looks to those dogs. I'd say you got a pretty good chance of winning. I've been watching them run for a good many years, and those dogs stack up with the best of them. I think one of the gears is warped. We'll have to pull it out and take it to shop. How long before we get this crane operating again? Two or three weeks. Two or three weeks? Oh, what is it? I come to see Charlie. You better see Charlie on your own time. You better get back to work. I did plenty of work. Come on, have some tea with us. You better have a talk with your friend, Charlie, or he's going to be out on the streets looking for work. He sucks. From now on, you better listen to what the boss says. Okay, Charlie. These fellas get their boat out of the mud. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Have you seen that Eskimo fellow, Isak? No. I hate to do this to him, but uh, if he shows up, tell him he's fired. He's almost an hour late coming back from lunch. This is the third time it's happened. some work. You go to the picture show. Nothing today, but we'll keep your application on file. In the meantime, why don't you try the railroad yard? I'm sorry, we're not hiring. We don't have anything today, sorry. We visit a friend from my village. He's the best caribou hunter in Alaska. You know, Esau, since I came from the village, I already got three jobs. And I got fired from all of them. Sometimes my boss don't understand me and I don't understand my boss. On my last job, the boss tell me he want to help the Eskimo fellas. So he give me a clock so I know what time to wake up. So I try that clock for a few days and I throw it away. And when the boss asked me how come I throw that clock away, I told him Eskimos don't need a clock to tell the time to hunt caribou or when to go to sleep. 
I told him Eskimo gonna hunt when he's hungry and sleep when he's tired. A few months ago, a fellow came down to the village. He told me plenty of jobs in Anchorage. So I sold my things and came down here. Sure, plenty of jobs okay for Eskimos born down here in Anchorage, but not okay for the Eskimos folks like you and me. Isak, you stay around here, you start to feel like a curbu in that zoo. I'm going back to my uh, cousin's village tomorrow, and there's uh, lots of caribou there. And if you want to come, you can come with me. Uncle Isaac, is this the kind of caribou you hunt? Same kind of caribou, but we don't have fences up north. See. Well, why don't you try to shut down the street? No, no work. I'm sorry. Plenty of jobs okay for Eskimos born down here in Anchorage, but not okay for the Eskimos folks like you and me. Hey, fella, want a couple of hours of work? Okay. Let's go home. Please, let's go home. You stay around here, you start to feel like a curbu in that zoo. Isa, why don't you go back home? You told me your friend said there are plenty of caribou's near his cousin's village. Why don't you go there? But I saw my things. I can't hunt without my rifle and dogs. For me, the rifles are for sport. For you, they're for life. Take the dogs, too. I'm sure Matthew will want you to have them. That boy left those dogs. I couldn't take them. But I think I'll go home anyway. I'll take the train tomorrow. I can't hunt without my rifle and dogs. For me, the rifles are for sport. For you, they're for life. to get your train.
Matthew wanted you to have his dogs. Before Matthew left for school, he wanted me to say goodbye for him. Maple syrup. It's a gift from Matthew. Here's a railroad ticket, Esau. The train will take you and dogs to Fairbanks. Thank you. too sad to say goodbye to my dogs because I knew I would miss them. But when I watched them drive away, I knew that I would miss my Uncle Isaac even more. <laughs> 